welcome to Chess for Nights. Uh, I'm back, so you're excited at home. Calm down a little bit. Uh, I just taught the one o'clock class, so I had to go to Starbucks and get some medicine and, and get some sparkling water, and I forgot all my Donald jokes. That's how scary that class was. Okay, now we'll do half an hour of Donald jokes. All right, so in my last class, one of the kids did a drum choke without knowing it. Yeah, it was you. He had pawns on H2, G2, F2, and then C2, B2, A2. And he had knights on E2 and D2 and said, that's my wall. So there you go. OK. Now, this class, we're going to discuss something you should already know, except you don't know it. That's why I'm going to teach you. OK, no talking. Let's see, new position. I can't do that. I have to do this and keep click. Oh, class is over. OK, now, as you all know, We'll, we'll, we'll clear the board and we'll, yeah. OK, there's a grandmaster you never heard of called Roman Jinjahashvili. OK? And he has a funny bet about this position, which will pop up momentarily. There we go. You, with, who's heard of him? OK, now let's vote, because voting's fun. OK, just don't vote for this time. You can vote for white should win if both sides play correctly, or black should draw if both sides play correctly. And this, you have to look over there. Looking at me is not going to help. Who says white's winning? Raise your hand. Who says no, black should draw? Uh, many people voted twice, and I'm not kidding. To the people at home, at least half of them voted twice. So they're <laughs> staff right, I guess. I don't know. OK, sort of like in the real election, they voted twice. OK. So especially in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. All right, can I help you? All right, did you vote for Buchanan again? All right, the reason we're talking about this is this is a draw, but you don't know that. Well, Ar well Arja does. The other ones just randomly raised their hand. That was good. Now, the reason it's a draw is the bishop is on a white square and therefore will always be on a white square. The, or you could go to the black square. Okay, and the black king which is stopping the pawn from promoting, is on a dark square. If this bishop was on a dark square, white would win easily. But now you don't win. And the reason you don't win is you can't kick him out of the corner. And if you permanently put him in the corner, it'll be stalemate. And even though Nigel Short doesn't like it, stalemate is a draw. OK, this is stalemate. If you don't know what stalemate is, go to the 1 o'clock class. Although you will never learn what it is then, so then it's not going to help you. Or you could play bishop d5 stalemate if you prefer that stalemate. If you don't stalemate, then I'm going to go here and here and here forever. You could stop that by going there, and then you'd lose your pawn. Or I could not take the pawn and still draw. OK, so this is a draw. Any professional chess player, and even the cameraman knows it. Can you believe that? Ben Simon knows this is a draw. Now, the reason I brought up Roman Jinjahashvili is he goes to a tournament, and he says, hey, if I'm white here, I can promote my pawn to a queen. And professional players like myself, we know that this is a draw. So we're like, all right, let's see you do it. Now, remember, he didn't say he could win. He said he could promote his pawn to a queen. So what he does is, he promotes his pawn to a queen. Do, 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 do. And then he says, you have to pay me because I promoted my pawn to a queen. <laughs> of course, you don't win because you could just take it. But he didn't, he, didn't, he didn't say he would win. He said he promoted his pawn to a queen. OK, now this is a draw, but there's a reason why it's a draw. It's a draw because black's king is on h8. If black's king was over here on the other side of the board, then white would get a queen. And some of you can mate with a queen. Some of you. OK. Yeah, some of the kids are nodding, and some are like, what yeah. Doing? Yeah, and most of them are lying, So even the ones that are sitting. All right, now, why am I showing you this? Because I have to kill time until the class ends. So let's do that now. OK, good. Let's go to the actual lecture where we discuss this in detail. Why? Because it keeps happening. It keeps happening. OK, now, this is a famous puzzle that I've shown people for the last 20 years. And it was invented 
by Sam Lloyd in the 1800s. It's an old puzzle. Now, if you remember the last problem that was about one minute ago, there was a black king, and he was in H8, and I was explaining when the king's in the corner, it's a draw. And in this position, the king is not in the corner. So it might be a draw. Maybe black will get his king to the corner. Okay, but if you're white, you don't want black's king to get to the corner, and then maybe you'll win. This is actually a winning position for white if white plays perfect every move, or better than perfect. Arjun's never seen this position. What? Very good. He said he has, but he forgot. OK, you with the wrong answer. Knight, very good. Did, did you get that? Did you get the knight? Now, you're incorrect again, just like you were last class, because I said the wrong answer. You gave the right answer. You keep making me look bad. Can you edit that out where he's right? Because I said the wrong answer. Yeah. Bishop e6, the only winning move. Now, if black saunters over to the corner, then he doesn't get there too good, does he? Now he has to move away, because that's the rules, and then white queens. Therefore, king f 8s not a good move. So let's play king e7. Let's play a good move. Now what do you do? One move that wins. You with an answer. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to guess anymore. Keep moving your pawn, which you haven't moved yet. I like that. But keep moving it. Yeah, h6. Right. Now this is sort of a threat, so probably black should stop that. You. Now, this is sort of a threat. So we should probably stop that. You. Bishop f5. Now, black has lots of king moves. I would guess five. And four of, well, g7 is illegal. Four of them let the pawn queen. So probably those aren't good. So let's not let the pawn queen. Now, Black wants to play king here, and finally we have our draw. I wonder if we can stop king g8. Hold on. A, a bathroom's over there. You. He's good at killing time. Good job. The problem with bishop e6 is I go here, and then you're like, oh, say oh now. <laughs> when I taught that to Beck, he said Odile, and I'm like, close enough. Wait, none of you got that. And none of you at home got that either. All right. Well, Spencer got it if he's watching, but he's not watching. You. Yeah, the one with the right answer. Bishop h7. And now all the squares that go to the h file are prevented from you know, going there. And if king f6 with the idea of num, num, num. We can stop king g5 by playing, yeah, king f4, and white wins. So that's a puzzle, and that's the answer. And that kind of bishop and wrong colored rook pawn puzzle, that's fun. But in the real world, where we're playing chess, that never happens, except it happened every game the last week. That's, that's all that happened. Okay, so I'm doing a lecture on it. Now, I played in a tournament 10 days ago at the chess club upstairs. And I played Nazi Pakidzi. She's the US women's champion. Okay, and I got a winning position, this one. I'm up two pawns because I said so. Also, I'm up two pawns. And here I blundered a bishop because that's how I roll. I played rook d4 and she took my bishop. It's true. If I take her rook, which I did do, then she checks and wins my rook. Yeah, you see it? Yeah. So I thought I could take with a queen. But she still wins my rook because of bishop c5. OK, so rook d4 was a really bad move. OK, so then we get to the end of the game. I guess I have to leave and come back, because that's what I do. OK, well, let's, let's find out. We get to the end of the game. Notice she's still up a bishop. Now, most of you would take the bishop, and then black would play f2, then f1. 
So then I would lose. So I didn't do that. I played king d2. And in this position, she made the move that doesn't win. It ended in a draw. She played bishop f6. I played here. And we agreed to a draw. Notice this pawn's queening on a white square. And that's a dark squared bishop, as we've been discussing throughout this class. That's a draw. Okay. Now in this position, black could have won by getting to that position we just looked at in the puzzle. Black could have taken, then defended her pawn. And now I thought, I'll do this. She'll take my queen. I'll take her pawn. And she has the wrong rook pawn. We both thought that. So we thought it was a draw. However, she can get to that puzzle position by playing h4, h3. And now, if you remember the puzzle and the answer that Arjun gave two minutes ago, how does black win here? Arjun told you two minutes ago. We already saw this position. You. Bishop h2. Bishop h2. Uh-oh. Now the white king can't get over there, can it? And if I play king here, just like in the puzzle, although here it's easier, the king has lots of squares to go to that stop king g4. Now, n neither one of us saw the idea of bishop g3, h4, h3, bishop h2, because we had seconds on our clock. Just like when you play chess, our game was five and a half hours long. And we both had about 20 seconds left. So we didn't play the perfect moves, although we sort of did until the end. Okay, so that game ended in a draw. I should have won, and then she should have won, then it was a draw. Okay, and I was like, wow, bishop in the wrong colored rook pawn. I'll never see that again. And then in the same tournament, we had bishop in wrong rook pawn. Okay, in this position, white has two passed pawns. And what he did was he got black's bishop by sacrificing one pawn and then winning the bishop for the other pawn. First, he moved around for 100 moves to kill time because he won my lecture to last very long. Okay, he's good at killing time. All right, and finally, he decided to win the bishop. C7 check. Which way does black take with the king or the bishop? bishop. If you take with the bishop, I'll play E7 check and E8 queen. He took with the king. And they got bishop, and the bishop's on a white square, and this pawn's on a dark square. Is the black king in the corner? No. no. This is a drawn position if both sides play well. However, I said if both sides play well. If you want to see not playing well, this is a good example of that. Every move was the worst. Who won? You did. Okay, I'm not even playing. Okay, now in the game, what should... What should happen is white should try to take this pawn at some point, And while he's doing that, black's running into the corner. Instead, they moved around forever, putting us to sleep. Okay? And white missed several ways to win when black's king was too far away. Okay? The first one was in this position. In this position, white could play bishop g8. Bishop h7, forcing the king this way. And what happens is, if I take your pawn and your king's on this side, you can't stop me from queening, can you? And that's what should have happened. Okay, and, and white wins. White's going to play king g5 and then make a queen. The black king can't get over there, can it? Okay, but he played king d3 instead. He's still winning. And in this position, he could have played king d4 and won the same way. And the black king can't get to h8 because of the white bishop and the white king. The king can't get into the corner, and white wins. Instead, he played here. Now, the game ended in a way that will confuse most of you, because you're easily confused. I'm talking to you at home, of course. OK. In this position, black claimed a draw. He said it's a draw. And the director was Mike Cummer and said, why is it a draw? You with the right answer. The 50 move rule, the rule you don't understand. I'll explain it now, then one minute after my explanation, you cannot understand it again. Okay? 
In chess, if both sides make 50 moves in a row, 50, and there's no captures, and there's no pawn moves, you can claim a draw. That's actually what just happened. If white had played king takes pawn, that would be a capture. Then they have to play 50 more moves. This game was 162 moves. It would have been over 200 moves if you had played king takes pawn. Now in this position, if both sides keep playing and don't claim a draw, black's king does get to h8. You see what I'm saying? And therefore, what should the result be? It's a draw. So in the final position, it should be a draw, but he claimed a draw. And that game went over seven hours and 162 moves plus tax with no tax. OK, so that was a long game. So I was like, wow, I had bishop and wrong rook pawn, and my opponent didn't win, and they should have. And then in another game in the same tournament, there was bishop and wrong rook pawn, and the guy should have won, and he didn't. That'll never happen again. And then the following week, in the world championship match between and the, the other guy, Sergey Karjakin. He came from Detroit where he was doing some carjacking, right? Yeah. They played a game, and Karjakin was in a lot of trouble, okay? But he knew about the famous games of Ben Feingold and Matt Larson. Now, in this position, White had good winning chances. White's king is better. And two bishops is better than a rook. And white actually had three pawns, and he gave one of his pawns away. And white wants to play like bishop here, and bishop takes pawn, but he's in check. So that would be illegal. So he blocked with the bishop. And then Karyakin was like, wait a minute, bishop and wrong rook pawn. You can be down a bishop and a pawn and still draw. And he was like, let's see, this rook pawn is going to a dark square, right? So which bishop does Karyakin want to take, the red one or the green one? The green one. Wants to take the green one. However, you may have noticed white also has a g pawn. White doesn't just have an h pawn. So Karyakin was like, let's get rid of that g pawn, h5, blundering a pawn. What a potzer. And Carlson's like, oh boy, a free pawn. And then Karyakin's like, I have an idea. Let's make a queen. And Carlson's like, Ish don't think so. Bam. And Karyakin's like, I'm the worst player in the world. Let's give more pieces away. Okay. So Karyakin gave everything away, just like you guys do. And now we have bishop and wrong rook pawn. These rook pawns. They don't go to the queening square of the bishop. So Karyakin must have seen all the recent developments in this endgame and sacrificed everything. And he's like, well, I know how to play king g8, king h8. I know how to do that. And so he did. And then Magnus is like, aha, you can't play king g8. OK, it's not stalemate because he has a pawn. Now what's funny is, if this pawn was gone, it's an easy, easy, easy draw. But when there's a pawn on the board, sometimes you unstalemate yourself, and the guy gets rid of his rook pawns, but not here. You with the right answer. Right, every legal move draws g6 and g5. That's why I knew the answer was right. However, he played g5, but g6 also draws. And now, you could take the pawn on passant, unless you're in the 1 o'clock class, then you don't know what that is. Or you can take it extra crispy, I mean regular. H takes G stalemate, or H takes G stalemate. He took on passant, and it was stalemate. Who won? No. Nobody. Nobody. So Karyakin gave everything away to get bishop and wrong rook pawn. Now I want to explain something to you. When computers came out, I tried to trick them. Okay, You can't trick them now. Well, sometimes you can. So I would set up a position like this. I would set it up. Right, there's a prize for shutting the door. They're looking at the door like, wow, that's, hmm. OK. Now, when computers were getting very popular in the 80s and 90s, I set this position up, and the computer said white's plus 5 billion, because white's up a bishop and five pawns. But this is a draw, as we discussed earlier, because black plays king here, king here. 
If I put this on a computer now, it's going to say it's a draw because it can calculate a thousand moves ahead and they can't do anything. Okay? So grandmasters know these positions are draws. So sometimes when they're losing, even though they're down a bishop and a pawn or a bishop and two pawns or a bishop and five pawns, <laughs> you can still draw because it's the wrong colored rook pawn. You can escape to these positions. That's what I did. I should have lost, but I drew. That's what Matt Larson did. He should have drawn, then he should have lost, then he drew. That's what Karyakin did, and he did draw, and that was correct. For some reason, the best players in the world play better than me and Matt Larson. Oh, wait, that actually makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So it's not always a draw, as we saw in the puzzle and in the games, but it has good drawing chances, and it's always a draw when your king's in the corner blocking the pawns. Okay. You can't, you can't win these positions. And these are important things to know when you're losing in an end game. Let's say you're playing an end game and you're down a piece. So you're like, wow, I'm going to lose. Well, if there's no pawns on the board, you're not going to lose. If your opponent has a king and a bishop and you have a king, you're not going to lose. If your opponent has a lot of pawns, you will. So when you're down material or you're losing, you try to escape to these known positions that are draws. That way you don't lose. And even though that's what me and Larson had in mind, we were still losing. That's what Karyakin had in mind, and he did it. That's what Sam Lloyd had in mind in his puzzle, but he found the one way for white to win. The puzzle that I showed you at the beginning, you guys remember that, right? Yeah. This one? Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks it's a draw, but it's only a draw when your king gets here, as Matt Larson found out. Okay? And if your bishop gets here and your pawn gets here, as in the puzzle, and is in my game with Nazi Pakidzi, which didn't happen, but it could have, then, then white wins. It's only a draw if your king can stop the pawn from promoting. If your king's not in the corner, then it's not so easy. And in fact, this happens more often than you think because grandmasters are good at defense. When they're losing or about to lose, they try to find some tricky draw where it looks like they're losing, but they have a trick at the end. Now to finish, I'll show you an unrelated position to show you what I mean. Uh, this is a well-known drawn position where it looks like you're winning. Oh, I guess it's black to move. Okay. Now again, I was making fun earlier. People might have heard at home or maybe you guys were asleep when the video started. There's a grandmaster named Nigel Short who likes to say crazy things. Okay. And some of the things he says aren't crazy, but that's an accident. Okay? And he says, stalemate should be a win. If I stalemate you, I should win. You can't move. I should win. But in stalemate, it's a draw. Now, if you, who plays checkers? If you play checkers and you stalemate your opponent, you do win. It's repeated three times. Well, that's chess. Okay. No, you stalemate so, by repeating. That's one stalemate. That's possible, yeah. Also possible. Okay, now Nigel thinks stalemate should be a win. I actually like that it's a draw because then funny stuff can happen. Otherwise, nothing's funny. Now, this position is a draw because of the stalemate rule. And if it was white's turn to move, white would win. But it's black's turn to move because I said so. Okay, now you'll notice it's check. Unless you're in the one o'clock class, then you won't even know you're playing chess. All right, now. If the king goes to the F file at any given moment, how about now? Then you lose your queen. So your king can never go to the F file. Never. And if your king goes back and forth, even though both people will start laughing, right? Isn't that funny? Okay. You still won't win. If you want to win, you got to move your king up the board and avoid the F file because he won't get pinned then. And in this position, it looks like black is finished. Now if you play check, I'll checkmate you. But because of the drawing trickiness of the class, being down a lot of material but drawing anyway, black has a move and the game should be a draw. White can't win. Black has a very sneaky move. And if you saw every movie ever made, you'll know not to underestimate the sneaky. You know what movie that is? You. Rook h6, check. That's also called a skewer. See how you're doing all that there? You don't have to. 
the only move that makes any sense is Take. taking it, and that's stalemate. So it's a draw, unless you're playing Nigel, then you might go to the director and you might say that he wins. <laughs> now, in Nigel's world, where you win if you stalemate your opponent, in his world, you could actually win with just a king. Okay. In fact, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on Twitter and or Facebook, I haven't decided yet, and I'm going to ask Nigel, and I'll tell you guys next week. Wait, I'm going to ask him. I'm going to say, now wait a minute, Nigel. Let me ask you a question. In this position, if white plays h7, a7, and you play king c7, does black win? Black stalemated white totally. in, in his world. He says if you still meet somebody, you should win. So you could win with just a king? I don't know. He might say, no, no, just a king is a draw, but otherwise you win. I don't know what he's going to say. He might write like 10 paragraphs. I don't know. Are you actually going to do that? Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll say, if you win with a stalemate, what if you just have a king, you still win? He'll be like, of course. Or he'll say, of course not. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Well, I actually like that stalemate to draw because then when somebody's destroying you, you can still draw. Otherwise, you can't. Like your opponent has a queen, a rook, a bishop, and you have a king. And that's it? You can still draw with a stalemate rule. Otherwise, see, that's the problem. Nigel's a little older than he used to be. I'm not sure how. Maybe he got older. And so when Nigel's up a queen and a rook, he's always stalemating his opponent. He doesn't win anymore. He's got to stop doing that. Half the kids, every kid believes me. You guys at home, they're like, yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, they're the smartest kids ever. All right. So I hope you learned something today, mainly about the budget. Okay, and also don't call Taiwan, they'll call you. <laughs> <laughs>